Okay, in today's lecture, I'm going to go over some additional considerations for the incompressible flow over airfoils. So first, we'll talk a little bit about uh, how we can compute the lift uh, over an airfoil that isn't thin. So, as alluded to in the last lecture, thin airfoil theory is good for airfoils that have up to about 12% thickness. And if we go beyond that, we need to use a numerical method as there's no longer an analytical solution. And the numerical method that's very effective is called the vortex panel method. So this is a numerical approach uh, that allows solutions to incompressible inviscid flow over an arbitrary lifting body. inviscid flow over an arbitrary body. Okay, and as mentioned when we were going through the derivation of thin airfoil theory, the idea is to place vortex sheets on the airfoil surface instead of along cam the camera line. So instead of collapsing the airfoil to its camera line, we're actually going to have the streamlines follow the surface of the airfoil. So this allows accurate solutions for even thick airfoils. And as I mentioned, uh, by thick, we usually mean greater than 12% thickness. And of course, the downside to this method is there's no analytical solution. So I'll explain a little bit more about how this works. And the reason we care about this is, well, first it's, a, it's something, it's a generally useful tool. But in this course specifically, we are, you're going to be using the vortex panel method in the upcoming mini project on airfoil performance. You won't have to develop the method yourself. You'll be using software which uses a vortex panel method. But I want you to have some understanding of what's going on under the hood. So in a vortex panel method, we place uh, discrete vortex panels. And essentially, these are just uh, discretization of the continuous vortex strength distribution we have uh, in the analytical case for thin airfoil theory. So we place these panels along the airfoil surface uh, and each panel has a constant strength gamma sub j. And then we define a control point
which is at the center of each panel. And then we enforce the inviscid flow wall boundary condition v dot n equals zero is enforced at these control points. So if we have an airfoil, it's maybe quite thick. We could imagine if we put some vortex panels on here. There's a panel, there's another panel, there's a panel. So each of these red line segments in between the dots correspond to a panel, and these would continue all the way around. And then in the center of each panel, so say here, is our control point. And that is, say, the JACE panel. Then once this has been set up, we simply solve a system of linear algebraic equations. for the unknown gamma sub j's with the additional constraint of the cutter condition at the trailing edge. Now, there's many implementations of these vortex panel methods that have been developed over the years. Uh, and the details are of how you do this is beyond the scope of this course. Um, but as I said, we'll use the panel method software in the Airfoil design project using a piece of software called X-Foil.